Hey guys, Jason here with Andrew, and welcome back to part two of reacting to your hot takes. We received so many responses, there were so many tricky hidden ones, like <laughs> comments with five and one. So <laughs> we ended up having more than we thought, and we thought it would be best to uh, just split it into two videos. Now, like before, we are also going to be rating each of these takes out of ten in terms of how hot we think the takes are. All right, starting for real, Australia Duel Masters says, you can't build a deck around Aura Pegasus Avatar of Life. Yeah, so this one, I'm not sure if uh, you were supposed to um, say that you can build a deck around Aura Pegasus, because you definitely can't. <laughs> Andrew destroying all the dreams <laughs> now. Yeah, just like name me one good horn beast, right? That isn't Rumbling Terror Horn. horn. Isn't Rumbling Terror Horn. <laughs> alright, radioactive horn the strange. Alright, alright, I guess I guess I can. But I was I was gonna say um ancient horns was okay, but, but other than that <laughs> What about a spectral horn? You know the, the three mana four thousand vanilla? Oh, yeah. It's like cereal. Maybe 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 um uh, what, what you call it? Uh, or Pegasus does have a chance. Uh, the the point is that they 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 suck, and um, I think yeah. Angel Commands aren't too far off either. <laughs> yeah, I think Angel Commands are what's holding the deck back, not the Horn Beast. Yeah. <laughs> but even with Horn Beast, you don't really have any cheap ones, right? The, the cheapest one is three mana. It's just hard to get out of Vortex if your cheapest card is three mana. <laughs> And I think Aura Pegasus costs more than it's like it's on the more expensive side of Vortex. Oh, Vortex is yeah, as well. yeah. yeah. Um, so definitely not a hot take, uh, but if, I guess if you meant it the other way around, um, uh, then it is a hot take. <laughs> so two out of 10 or eight out of 10, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coincidentally, I have the exact same thoughts as Andrew. I guess we agree on a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think reading the comment, I think it's a pretty cold take, but if it meant that if the intention was you can build a deck around or pegasus then like i think it's pretty hot take eight out of ten uh i guess i, I copied andrew's homework on this <laughs> i don't know what else to say what is what does that mean it's like you could copy my homework but change it a bit or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> copy my homework but change it a little yeah. okay moving on Polly asks, no, I guess not asks, <laughs> Polly has a hot, hot take. <laughs> um, he thinks that more people should embrace DM13 and let it be uh, a part of the DM experience. What do you think? This is a very opportune comment because we recently announced that we are wanting to do a season that includes DM13. Oh, man. I don't think this is a hot take. I think it's more of an uncommon opinion rather than an unpopular one because people probably haven't given this idea too much thought. I certainly don't disagree. We've been very interested in introducing DM13 because it neatly concludes the holy fist block and has some cool cards. Shameless self-promotion, if we do end <laughs> up pushing through with our season, maybe it can help more people embrace DM13. Since, you know, our videos have the pop-ups showing the card effects in English, which might help with the translation aspect. Hmm. But go, but going back to the, the opinion, I would say five chilies. Yeah, a mild five chilies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. This is not really a hot take. Um, I do think, actually, I do think the general consensus is that DM13 fits quite well, right, into the TCG. Yeah. Um, like you said, it's um, introduced in the same block. And yeah, we just love DM13, and we can't wait to show you guys. <laughs> uh, two out of ten for me. Nice. So this next one is really interesting, because it sort of contradicts the previous comment. I'm paraphrasing, but next champ says, The TCG was discontinued at the perfect time. It was late enough in the timeline to give us the avatars, and any later would have given enemy multi-civ, which from a lore perspective doesn't make sense. Next Champ expresses some concern over some DM13 cards, like Judgment and Miramax, and they believe DM12 
is better than what came before and after, especially with DM's mechanics being as simple and elegant as they were at that point in time. Hmm. So since I guess this is kind of the opposite of the previous uh, hot take, I guess to be consistent, <laughs> I would say that this isn't... Oh, sorry. Um, to be consistent with the previous hot take, which I, I said it wasn't a hot take, so I would have to say this is a hot take. <laughs> uh, yep. I do think, um, yeah, like DM13, at least to me, uh, felt like a natural progression of Duel Masters. And the mm -hmm. cards really... You know, a, a bit, there's a few, like, um, noticeable ones that are a bit overpowered. Um, but in general, I think it fits quite nicely. <clears throat> uh, I do agree, like, like you said, judgment is uh, is quite strong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there definitely should uh, be some, I guess, uh, restrictions or, or, or at least the DMP effect. Um, but yeah, what, what I also really like about DM13 is that it does give old decks some really cool upgrades, um, which is also part of the idea behind our season three so eight out of ten for, for the chilies now i this is this is going to be an interesting one because i don't agree with andrew on this one oh i i don't think this is a hot take at all i think many tcg enthusiasts are very grateful for the 12 sets that we got we did get a decent amount of multi civ cards and the avatars are indeed very cool even if their gameplay isn't super impressive um the later TCG sets also gave cards, which I and many others, I'm sure, consider as valuable additions to the game. So I agree that set 12 was a good place to stop, as any earlier might have felt unfinished, which is funny because set 12 wasn't even the last set of the block. Mm -hmm. But I also think that much of the love for the TCG card pool comes from the sheer amount of time the community has spent with the cards. Like, if we had gotten set 13 or even 14, I don't think many people would say, oh man, I, I wish the game ended after set 12. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, most sets introduce problem cards, but they also introduce really yeah, cool cards. Yeah. I think people would have taken the good with the bad, perhaps adjusting their house rules, and then they would have learned to live with, like, whatever cards the sets brought. So... Overall, I agree that the TCG ended in a really good place. But I also think that people would look back at the game just as fondly had we gotten an extra set or two. So, uh, very thought, well thought out comment. I like it, but I would give this five chilies as well. So oh five chilies for both of the DM13 comments. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. The real Zagira says an unpopular opinion amongst my friends is that the game is at its best without any sort of ban list. So the game is already incredibly limited, um, only having access to around 800 cards, and he thinks that in the TCG um, that's you know quite low. So limiting cards further would only hurt the game. And he does... Seem to have a soft spot even for Bombazar. <laughs> Hashtag free Bombazar. <laughs> I think the mention of Bombazar especially makes this a very <laughs> hot take. And I have to disagree. You cracked, I the, can see you an... cracked the formula. You just need to mention Bombazar. <laughs> yeah. Real Zerkio figured it out. <laughs> so I can see an argument for this sentiment. In an environment where the number of decks that exist is the only priority and wins and losses don't matter, which they usually do. In, in this context, yes, having no restrictions satisfies the objective better than having restrictions because you have access to more cards. But outside of this, is the game the best it can be when you have a very small number of decks or strategies mm. dominating the format? Yeah. Is the game the best it can be when cards with infuriating game design are winning all the time? These issues have plagued many card games, even in their infancy. And, you know, while they are subjective, I would guess that most people would say no. And restrictions exist specifically to address these sorts of problems. Yeah. As we've seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! hitting its tier 0 decks with the ban list time and time again. I don't view a game or format as being good because of the quantity of available cards per se. 
especially since the vast majority of cards printed tend to not matter. If, if we were to talk about what makes a game or a format good, I think the points most players would agree on are one, diversity in viable decks, yep. two, matchups being fun and rewarding, and three, minimal BS. And as small as the DMTCG card pool is, I do believe that there are a few cards which are a bit too over-centralizing or oppressive, like Bomb Bazaar or Slash Charger and 40 cards. I personally care more about narrowing the gap between playable and semi-playable strategies, so I would rather remove or nerf three or four decks to open up the playing field and unlock, you know, the potential of other decks. So overall, I think restrictions, as imperfect as they can sometimes be, are still better at improving a format versus having no restrictions at all. But that is, of course, just my response. The format you play should be the one that makes you the happiest. Yeah, yeah nine, I agree. Nine, yeah. Ch nine chilies from me, oh, man. not ten, because I know there are the hashtag free bomb bizarre people out there. <laughs> <laughs> not many, but, but they still exist. <laughs> I guess we're back on agreeing, Jason. Oh, yeah. You called me my homework. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a, quite a hot take. Um, yeah, Bombazar has just universally agreed to, you know, have made the game too linear, right? Like, it became either you were playing the Bombazar decks or you just had a deck that can be Bombazar, which um, yeah. aren't too many. <laughs> um, but saying that, I do agree that, um, you know, people's opinion on cards do change over the time. Very true. Um, just look at Coral, for example. Um, <laughs> and also a lot can be dependent on the meta. So cards that were deemed overpowered, but might not be so uh, under a, a certain meta. So um, hmm. yeah, uh, opinions can change, but uh, please no bombers are. <laughs> this one's a 9 out of 10 as well. <laughs> All righty. For the next comment, Wesley had a couple of ideas, so we're going to break them down. The first point, it's bad that the TCG didn't have the exact 40 card rule because it gave rise to these 50 plus card control decks. Yeah, I think the way to look at it is um, having like 50 plus cards or imposing a, a 40 card limit are just like two different ways of playing, right? I yes. honestly don't know which one is better. We certainly have a preference um, for one, uh, the 40 card limit. Um, but that's simply because we just don't like control decks that much, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but again, to like other people, maybe they love a control versus control matchup. So uh, at the end of the day, like, it comes down to how you enjoy the game. Uh, there's no right or wrong. So I would say this hot take is on the mild, milder side. Uh, five out of ten. Oh, yes. Very diplomatic, Andrew. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I think this would have been a hot take a while back, but I think more and more people are coming around to the 40-card limit. I know the Finnish community has adopted the 40-card limit, as have we, and I think the Singaporean community usually builds decks with 40 cards as well. I remember reading about it in a Google Doc a while back. And, you know, these are just exa the examples I can think of off the top of my head. There may be more. And since I also hate thick control piles, <laughs> I agree. Um, two out of ten chilies. Not a, an unpopular opinion at all. Now, moving on to Wesley's second talking point. Wesley has mixed feelings about different community ban lists because even with Bombazar banned, problematic cards still exist, like Cranium Clamp. And like Andrew, Wesley <laughs> believes that decks that run Cranium Clamp should have four coffees. Yeah, I agree. Like, Cranium Clamp is a four or more card, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this isn't really a hot take at all. I think, um, you know, there's always going to be a few suspect cards that, you know, elicit quite the reaction. <laughs> you know, you've got Cranium Clamp or Petrova. Um... Yeah, so it's, you know, it's quite hard to, when, when you think about it, it's quite hard to optimize a ban list, right? Um, like, when you ban cards, like, inevitably, there's going to be other strong or overpowered cards um, that's going to take its spot. So, I think it's, um, 
you know, it's it's hard finding finding the balance. Uh, so this one gets a three out of ten. Ooh, very interesting because I interpreted this one quite differently. Oh, okay. Well, it, it was a loaded it was a loaded idea, right? So I, I didn't know how to attack it. Um, I, I'm not sure how to categorize this take, but I I would say it's warm. Uh, the reason different community ban lists exist is because every community has a vision of how DM should be played. I certainly agree that there are problem cards outside of Bomb Bazaar. I actually don't think Clamp is that bad. Like, yes, losing to a Clamp on 4 or 5 sucks, but I think Miraculous Snare and Slash Charger and 40 cards are much worse. Mm. So mm -hmm. I agree with the sentiment here, but not necessarily the whole idea. But going back to the take, I would say 6 out of 10. <laughs> that, that's kind of what I give the agree with a sentiment, but not the whole idea. Six oh, out of yeah. ten. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on to Wesley's final talking point, Wesley recommends applying the OCG Hall of Fame rules with Emerald slash Charger, Bomb Bazaar, and Clamp restricted to one. And as a side note, Wesley also reckons having one Bomb Bazaar is actually pretty fun. Okay, so I don't know about the Bomb Bazaar bit, but... <laughs> but um... <laughs> I, I, I do agree uh, with the general uh, sentiment. Um, yep. I think um, like having ban lists can bring a kind of like a new dimension to the game, right? So it's like mm. it's just like another way of playing the game, and and like I said before, it just comes down to how you enjoy the game. So there isn't really a wrong or right. Um, if you find a format like a particular format uh, really fun, then you know by all means. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I would say um, this one again. I didn't actually assign. I didn't think about how many chilies this one, this one should have. <laughs> oh, um, well, if in doubt, five. <laughs> if in doubt, five. But I do. I definitely think it's on the milder side. So I'll give it. I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. Mm. Like a previous comment, I think this idea is more uncommon than unpopular. But, but then again, everybody loves Emerald, right? So maybe it would be unpopular. I, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I personally like experimenting with different rule sets, even though I'm pretty happy with the one we currently have. But my takeaway from this is people should be open to, to taking elements from different rule sets to create their ideal mm, rule yeah. set. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's pretty neat to try. Now, as for Bomb Bazaar at one being fun, I can totally see this being the case. But oh, you think so? Main, yeah, <laughs> like, like you just get access to this power. But, but my main worry is that it just gives decks with fire and nature an unreasonable yeah. advantage because yeah. of how strong Bombazar is. Yeah. But uh, all things considered, I, I'd give this a five chilies, five chilies out of ten for Bombazar. Plus one for Bombazar. <laughs> Plus one for Bombazar. <laughs> So Raul also has a few hot takes. Um, he thinks that we should draw two cards instead of one. <laughs> um, he thinks that this could um, put a more severe clock on control. So look at deck out. Um, but also um, he thinks that there needs to be a ban on cards that can cause mill. So cards like Slash Charger. What do you think? I think this is scalding hot. <laughs> I, look, I don't have any experience in game design, so it's hard for me to give a proper response, but I feel like there's a reason that every card, or most card games are built around drawing one at the start of the game. Right, yeah. yeah instead yeah. of two. Yeah. Uh, if what you're trying to do is nerf control or something, I feel like there are a lot of fundamental changes that you're wanting to happen in order to do that. Um, to be honest, if the objective is to put control or stall decks on a clock, I think following the OCG and limiting the deck size to 40 and introducing a Hall of Fame is a better way to go about <laughs> it. I think it's much simpler. So this is a very wild take. I, I think I would give this, yeah, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? Wow. Yeah, this one, I actually not sure what to think about. Like, it, in terms of, like, I wouldn't say it's like a hot take. It's just more of like a crazy idea, right? <laughs> Isn't that what hot takes are? Is it? 
I don't well, know. I don't know. I think hot takes for me at least is like it, you know, it's pretty controversial. But this one's just like it's so out there that you know the the only thing that you can you know form an opinion is, is is if you you know play a few games with it. <laughs> so yeah, true, true. I'm not sure what to think. Um, for this one, I'll give a not sure out of ten. <laughs> maybe you were maybe you know everyone just has it wrong you know maybe rahul has cracked the code, cracked on, the code. Op, on optimal on the optimal dual masters experience yeah i mean we, we could we should try two cards <laughs> that, that would be fine nature rush's dream oh my. there you go <laughs> that's why we don't do that that's why we don't do that oh <laughs> uh. Okay, so continue on. Raul also thinks that the game should benefit or could benefit from a stack system. So this is like uh, when you have multiple uh, card effects, uh, they they trigger and they go on the stack. Um, so they kind of um, resolve uh, one by one, or they resolve backwards. Uh, what do you think yeah. about that? All right, so we went from scalding hot to not hot at all. <laughs> I think this is a very reasonable idea. And we probably would have gotten an official ruling on this had the English yeah. game continued. Well, DMP uses a stack system where the thing that activated or entered most recently resolves first. And then so, yep. Yeah, yep. Pretty, much, pretty much the same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And we've been using that ruling for our games. So, yep. yeah. Uh, make, makes sense to me. Two chilies, one chili. It, it's a very reasonable take. <laughs> 1.5. <laughs> yeah, this one would be really cool. It's, yeah, two two chilies for me as well. Oh, 1.5. What did you say? 1.5. Oh, I'll, I'll say <laughs> I'll say two. Okay. I don't like 0.5. You don't like 0.5. <laughs> All right. Okay, continue on. Raul also has a pet peeve, um, but Barger and also other cards uh, should be eroded uh, to allow the use of short triggers. Uh, he thinks his design is too cool to have such a below average effect. Yeah, so I had to ask about this, and Baraga Blade of Gloom is a 4 mana 4000 Dark Lord whose effect is when you put this creature into the battle zone, Choose one of your shields and return it to your hand. You cannot use the shield trigger ability of that shield. Oh, so, okay. yeah. I don't think this is too hot or controversial. Um, to be honest, this is just like not a card that I have thought about. So this, yeah, this, even this kind of made my brain explode. <laughs> um, now, looking at cards like Ghastly Drain and Jewel Spider, I feel like this this design was intentional because it might make games too swingy yeah i mean um, i mean we have a card uh like a uh, brazanaga right ah yes that's true that is very true and that lets you use all your shield triggers all your yeah. gorium worm i think uh <laughs> the, the the interesting thing about brazanaga is that in the tcg it's not very good but i think it's it was or is hall of famed because of, of the interaction. card interaction yeah. that, that's crazy yeah. Um, it's like a I design, the... design is nightmare, right? When you're planning mm. around future cards, you, you always have to think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think it, this card would be fine uh, as 4 mana, 4,000. Um, maybe like the creatures with this sort of effect, like, you know, Jewel Spider can, you know, uh, activate shield triggers, even though it might make games a bit swingy. But then Ghastly Drain, obviously, No. I don't know how I feel about this, so I will just give this five chilies. <laughs> straight in the middle. <laughs> straight in the middle. Yeah, I'm also not sure about this card. I, I just think um, we just don't have that much experience with the effect. But for this one, I'm also not sure. So not sure out of ten. <laughs> okay, Raul has heaps of hot takes. <laughs> His, uh, his next hot take is that evolution creatures should get a discount on the cost of the base uh, card that they're evolving off. This one, I think, is really cool, but I also feel like it gives rise to a bunch of problems. Mm. Like, would you then have to reevaluate the cost of 
every existing evil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I also think that it might make certain evolutions OP, like Alcadius or Bejula with Soul Swap. Uh, yeah. So, because you can play them for like much yeah. cheaper now. Yeah, they, um, there has to be some sort of like. I think it's too overpowered at the moment, but the idea is definitely interesting, but maybe not um, to that extent. Maybe if you tone it down a bit, it might be. Or maybe that is the point. Maybe we want to live in a world where Bajula and Alcadius <laughs> are overpowered. I can tell you I'm... that we definitely do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. One interesting like comparison that DMP kind of has is the gravity zero ability, right? When like you have um, like enough creatures on the board, then it costs zero. Do not like. <laughs> Do, Do not, not like. like. At all. I hate gravity zero. All right, all right, fine. What about sympathy? It's kind of like yeah, sympathy. Sympathy is okay. <laughs> I like sympathy. Um. I think what you could do is, if the objective is to make the clunky evolutions better, you could just add it as a line of text to specific cards, rather than completely overhauling the evolution mechanic. Yeah, yeah. And then that might be that might be all right in moderation. Yeah. But um, for the idea in its current form, I would say six chilies out of ten. Six chilies. Yeah. Yeah, this one also, I don't I have no idea because like. On the one hand, it can make some like more expensive evolutions more playable, um, but whether or not that's a good thing is another question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm also not sure, man. Um, Raul, with all these questions, like thought-provoking questions, he's like, making my brain explode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then finally, Raul, what he thinks is his hottest take is that Gaunter should cost three. And his reasoning is that the whole cycle of cards uh, from his set is 3 mana 4k. Uh, so if you look at uh, Giga P Ponto uh, and etc. Um, yeah, what do, what do you think about that, Jason? So here's another one um, where I agree with the spirit of the comment more than the actual comment itself. I do think Gonta is too strong, but Gonta is actually not part of the Three mana four thousand cycle with uh, Giga Piponto, Buzz Betuichi, etc. The three mana four K cycle was released in set twelve, and mm. those cards were meant to support the evolutions in that set. Gonta was released as um, in set ten as part of another cycle where they released the five mana two K creatures with two effects, you know, based on the sieves, mm. and then each one had a little brother. So, like, Melnia to Pointa, Sandfist to Sky Sword, and then Gonta to Windax, etc. Mm. So, um, to nerf Gonta, I think instead of increasing its cost to 3, um, I think I think we should instead decrease the power, because increasing yep. the cost would yep. be redundant, since, you know, Buzz Betuichi exists, and it, yep. and it goes against the spirit of the card. So, I would keep Gonta's 2 mana cost, and then decrease its power to 3,000. And then maybe give it power attacker 1,000. Oh, yeah, but that would yeah, be interesting. 2 minus 3,000. Yeah, yeah. Because with this change, Gonta can now be answered by Pyro, Searing Wave, and Blockers. And then it still retains the speed needed for Russian aggro decks. And, you know, still has an above average power mana ratio with no drawback yeah. effect. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. Like, um, I don't really mind the whole lore thing. Um, but, yeah. you know, hashtag carried by Gonta, I think, is a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I do, I do really think the the problem really lies in the Fire Nature Rush deck, right? It's just too fast, and then Gonta just represents a problem that you know blockers and, and like you said, like early removal cards can't deal with. Um, yeah. So I definitely need some sort of nerf, or at least like some sort of like hit on the ban list, maybe. Um, but yeah. um, having it being three mana four K doesn't really add anything extra. So I would say this one's a pretty hot take as well. Yeah, I, a, I would say this. Yeah, maybe a seven, seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll copy your homework. Seven out of ten. <laughs> seven out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> and for the final comment, Polly thinks that the Duel Masters TCG will be revived in the future. 
Mark oh, my words. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, my. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that you're, like, secretly, like, a wizard employee, and you're just, like, giving us hints. <laughs> but, yeah, I, um, I think this is a really hot take. Um, I guess to put it simply, like, if you ask yourself, or if you ask, uh, like, everyone, if wizard hasn't come back to the DMTCG in over 10 years, you know, why, why do you think they would suddenly do so now? <laughs> mm. And, uh, you know, we also had that whole debacle with, um, with Kaijudo, right? <laughs> Which uh, didn't yeah. end that well. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, in the end, does it really matter? <laughs> like, I, I truly think that, you know, with this community of people that we have, you know, for 10, 15 years after the game it's being dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, having a card game that's alive or dead doesn't really matter at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe the revival of DM was actually the amazing friends and amazing communities that you've met along the way. <laughs> I, I was not expecting this, it to take this turn. <laughs> to take this turn. Well done, Andrew. Well done. <laughs> What's your chili score, by the way? Oh, I didn't give it. So this you one did. was my my ten out of ten. This was your my my only ten out of ten hot take. Cause as um as hopeful as as we are, I I do not think this is happening at least anytime soon. <laughs> you were too busy being inspirational. Yes. And, to, and forgot to give your chili score. Yeah. Yeah. At first, I thought this was the hottest take of all, which is why I saved it for last. But I think there are a couple of optimists out there who share this opinion, so maybe not. Um, oh, yeah. you think so? I, I, think, I think there are people out mm. there who, who are, like, hoping against all hope. And, you know, I guess nothing wrong with that. Yeah, just, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I just try to be reasonable as well. Um, yeah, so I think Andrew really touched on all of the points, you know. Uh, I don't think there's anything else for, for me to add. I love the positivity and optimism uh, surrounding this sentiment. And I'd love to be proven wrong. Yeah, I would I love don't... to be proven wrong on this. <laughs> but I don't think it's happening. Uh, I give this nine chilies. Not ten. Not because ten? Of the op- because of the optimists out there. <laughs> okay. nine, nine chilies, not ten. <laughs> Please be a wizard employee. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of the video, us reacting to your hot takes. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We certainly had a lot of fun uh, reacting to these takes, even though it took a lot longer than I had originally anticipated. (laughs) Uh, Again, big thanks to everybody who participated in this video. We would not have been able to make it without you. But as usual, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.